All right, guys. So this is the step two of your broken values project. Um, essentially, our first step, like you guys remember, I printed you guys out five by seven inch images. Um, you had the choice of you know choosing the one yourself, or I handed you one if you didn't get that printed in time. So essentially, what we did, we got the ruler. Remember how we lined it up? Whenever you use the ruler, you always start at the first notch over here. Okay, so let me focus in on that. Always going to start from the first notch. Line your image up between there. It should measure out seven inches. Notch off every inch. Do the same thing for every single side. So line the ruler up again. Okay, making sure it's lined up in between uh, the five and this first notch right here. Okay, notch off every inch. You see how I bend that already? Once you do that for every side and you have those notches, you can just connect the dots and it makes a one by one grid. Now, um, Kind of backtracking again, we're going to do the same thing to our sheet of paper. The one that I provided for you is 10 by 14. So that's basically twice the size of the image that you had. Because remember, your printed out image should be a 5 by 7. This one's 10 by 14, so that's twice the size. Okay. Uh, so essentially what we did, we did a 2-inch grid on this one. So we do the exact same thing. Get the ruler, line it up to the side. You see how that white part of the paper is lined up to this black notch? We started there. Every two inches, boom, 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 boom. All the way to 12, it gives us uh, seven squares, which correlate to these seven squares on your image, okay? And then we do the same thing for the short side, except it's 10 inches long, so there should be five squares after you measure it off. So two, four, six, eight, 10. Did the same thing, I notched it on every edge, filled in the lines. If you need a longer ruler, you can use the long edge of your portfolio to link up uh, this, notch and the bottom one down here okay just use a long sheet of paper a long um, you know like stiff thing that you can use as a ruler it doesn't matter what but what I wanted to show you guys in this video is essentially the next step so we want to transfer this image onto this larger grid okay and the reason that we're using the grid method is because it gives you fairly accurate proportions okay you want to draw that grid in lightly that way you can erase it away because it's only being used as a sort of placeholder to make sure that your image can get copied accurately. Okay, so I've already started doing it here. I have an image of the cicada. So essentially, what I did, I just started, looked at my image. Each of these squares correlates to a square. So this one correlates to this one, this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. If it helps you, you can label them. Like, I don't know if you ever played Battleship, but you can do one, two, three, four. Uh, five, six, seven, and then uh, like A, B, C, D, E. This is optional, but if it helps you, you can be like, okay, A1, I know that this visual information is in this square. So C1, I know this is here. You don't have to do that if it helps you. It's just a way of keeping yourself, um, you know, uh, aware of what's going on with your image. So um, the way I started, I started from the square right here at the tail end of the... Um, cicada's wing. So I know this square correlates here. So the way that I look at it, um, and it's really easy to just gloss over this and do it really quickly and inaccurately, but I want you guys to start practicing accuracy with what you draw because it's, it's at the core of everything that you do. So what I did, I say, okay, looking at this square, this part of the wing where it touches right here at the top, that's like less than half I can kind of eyeball it. I don't have to measure or anything, but I'm like, okay, I'll make a mark right there. That's where it touches. The edge part of the wing, about right there, that's where it touches. And then the bottom part is right here, which is about halfway between this vertical mark, okay? So I made three marks, and then I'm gonna go over to my grid, and I'm gonna make those same three marks, okay? And you can just, you estimate relatively, okay? This isn't an exact science, but it's a lot more accurate than freehanding. So what I'll do is I'll go over here, I'll say, okay, I'm gonna make a mark here. It's kind of you know relatively the same amount of space from the edge. I'm gonna make a mark here. Okay, so I know that's where the end point of the wing, you know, that's where the end of the curve is, the longest point. And then I'll make a, a mark down here. All right. And then from there, it's literally just a matter of going in and trying to draw that shape. Okay. And you, you're gonna to have to freehand, it's gonna feel a little uncomfortable, but you can always go back in and adjust. All right. The key thing here is to draw lightly and uh, make as many of those aligning marks as you can. 
if it helps, you can draw like a whole line across your image and you can mark up this image as much as you want. It's here for your reference so that you have uh, something tangible that you can actually, you know, mark on and, and edit that way your image transfers successfully. So the way I'm doing it is just a line drawing. Okay. This doesn't have to be anything with value. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to add value at this point. We're going to do that later on in the project. But what you need to do is I start with the outline. So I'm going to go all the way around the cicada, all the way around. I'll get the outline of the head. I'll come down to the leg. That's where I'm at right now. I haven't added the legs in yet. But the next step would be to go around these legs, outline it, outline it all, get that big shape blocked in. Okay. I'm not going to include the hand of my image because I only want this. This is my focal point. Okay. I don't want to worry about any other visual information. We're going to abstract it after this step. So it, it's really irrelevant, you know, if I put that hand in the background. Now, if you want to copy the whole image exactly as it is, you're more than welcome to do that. It's going to take you a little bit longer, but, you know, challenge yourself. And if that's something you want to do, you're more than welcome to do that. But essentially what I'll do, I'll show you how I work this square right here. So I know I've got the head in relatively. It may not be 100% accurate, but I can always edit that. But what I'll do... So I'm going to get my image, hold it a little bit that way. I can put it nice and close and see exactly what's going on. Let me zoom in here really quick. So now I'm going to be working on this part of the square with the legs, right? So I know that this is one, two, three, three squares up and one square over. So I'll go to the same part, one, two, three. This is where the legs are going to be, okay? Now, the visual information in this particular part of the image, I see there's a leg right here, okay? About right in between the middle of that leg, I'll put a mark like that, okay? Because I know that's where, the, that's where that arc is going to be. That's where the vertical or the, the vertice is going to be between those two joints, leg joints. So I'll go into my image. I'll make a little mark right there, okay? So I'll put a mark. Now, the next piece of information that I want to have is where this leg ends. So what I'll do is I'll make another vertical mark right here. I know that's that's where the end of that leg is going to be. And so looking between these two, I'm going to try to estimate that same distance on my larger grid. All right. I'm going to do the same thing with this bottom leg down here. I see that it's about this far up from the bottom of the square. So I'll kind of estimate, mark where that is. It looks like probably be about right there. And then the bottom part of this leg right here, I'll mark where that is. So it's almost the same, maybe a little bit higher, maybe not, but I'll mark that over here, right? Top of the leg, I'll do that. If you want to just do one leg at a time, you can do that, or one piece of your, your um, image at a time, you can do that. But what you can also do is look at all these negative shapes, okay? So the legs create this. So you know you're going to have a shape that looks relatively like that in your image. So don't get really hung up on this, but just start drawing. So I know top of the leg is going to be right there. Um, this leg joint part is probably going to be like this. It comes down, it touches right about here. Okay, so I'll make a mark right there. I'm doing this fairly quickly, so it may take you a little bit longer, but don't worry about that. I want you guys to take your time. You have plenty of time for this project. If you're staying on top of it, it shouldn't really be anything that, that's super stressful. Okay, so I'm making a mark right here where the bottom part of that leg is. I made a, a mark where, where it's going to end on this axis. Okay, but I'm making this mark right here. So what I'll do next is complete that arc. So I'll come down. I know I'm going to stop right about here. All right, so I got that in. Now, um, I'll probably come back up right now and try to fill in the rest of this leg area. All right. And then I see a little mark right here where the head and the leg kind of meet. So I'll try to replicate that same shape. Okay. That makes the front part of the leg. All right. It does breach into the next square, so you could probably go in, do like that. But be accurate with your drawings, guys. Um, this is as much an exercise in value, line, shape, uh, and form as it is in, in trying to, to get visual accuracy and practice seeing things uh, more accurately. So this bottom part of the leg, 
I know the joint's going to be about right here. I'll make a mark right about here. All right. So then I can come up like this. Okay. That joint stops right there. I know the bottom part of this foot. I made the mark already. So I'm going to come back down. The bottom part of that leg is going to be right about there. It does extend into the next square and you can mark that off about a third of the way. Make a little mark. Now the bottom part of the leg, what I can do is bring it up. Okay. Just estimating where everything is. Come down. Something like that. But you're going to have to look and report. So observe, report, observe, report. Okay. So that's how I approach that square. Now, the logical next thing to do would be to move into an adjacent square where there's similar visual information and then you can correct and adjust as you see fit. So really quickly, I'll go into this one right here. Basically what I'm going to do. Okay. Where's the bottom part? I've already in this image marked off kind of where things are. If you have an image with like a, a dog on it, you know, like dogs have a lot of hair, you can't really have, you don't really have like a clean edge of where the edge of a dog is because they're just fluff, you know, they're a lot of fluff. So what you can do in your image is draw on it. So in this area right here, I see there's like some kind of hair on the cicada's eye. I'll just go over, make that a solid shape, make a solid line right there. That way you can just mimic that line and later on you can adjust if you want to add texture or something like that. Okay, but you just go square by square. So I'll do the next square and then I'm probably going to end this video. But I wanted to give you a brief tutorial on how I'm doing this step. Okay, remember we're not adding any value. At no point should you be going in there and starting to shade, make things real dark. Okay, it's all line. Okay, and I outlined that in the project. So what I'll do, see the eye is right here. This is about where the leg ends, right under the eye. I'll make a mark right there. And then the next part I will do is just come in and start drawing that, okay? And estimate, it's not always going to be 100% spot on, but you can adjust later. Something like that. I see a little negative shape down here, that one. So I outlined it. That way I can know the exact uh, shape that I'm supposed to be forming between these legs, okay? Something like that. Now I know this leg is kind of weird. There's a lot of hair and stuff going on down here. So what I'll do, I know this leg is coming out of the corner. I know it stops right about there, which is about less than, a, or maybe a, roughly a fourth of the way. So I'll bring this up until right here, okay? Then just align it vertical and horizontal. You can get really, really accurate with this. If you want to use a ruler, you can, but I just want you to be familiar with the grid, okay? So let's come up from right here, bring this up, pull that in. All right, and you just take it piece by piece. All right, so I'm going to post this into Schoology. You guys can reference it uh, at your leisure. I'm going to post another video after this one on how to start abstracting it, but I don't, we're not on that step yet. Today is the 7th, so it's Tuesday. We just got back from the three-day break. I'll post that later on this week when more of you guys are on that specific step, okay? Um, but, yeah, cool beans.